Hello, I'm Kenneth Copeland. Every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made the way for me. We're going, of course, all of my sessions, as I've, I've already said, will be concerning healing and particularly our covenant of healing. Open your Bibles or your iPads or whatever you have to the book of Ephesians first. There is an answer here in the second chapter of the book of Ephesians. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> it answers a very haunting question. Why is it? I don't understand this. I, 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 and it plagued me and plagued me for years. I, I, why Do I just preach and preach and preach and teach and teach and teach and lay hands on and, and we gather together? And so few people receive their healing. And the answer is right here. Particularly Western people. Most particularly, Western people. This is an Eastern book. It's two covenants. In the Western mind, covenant, <laughs> well, you know, you know, so, I mean, that and to most people, particularly people that don't even know anything about the Bible. A covenant is just something a neighborhood does and doesn't let you paint your house pink or something, you know. <laughs> everything, everything God has done, he had to have covenant to do it. Because his, his plan his idea before the foundation of the world was to create this, this, this utopia and then get it all fixed, get, get the thing all ready and then create a family. Amen. And a man and a woman equal to God in every way. He looked like him. We can tell it because Jesus. We can tell it because of Jesus. If you've seen him, you've seen the Father. If you saw Adam, you've seen the Father. And Adam's name is blood. He intended for him to take that pilot project and with the blessing of of the Lord and with his dominion and with their life together, continue and continue and continue until this planet became the garden spot of the universe. And then after that, then we could go to the other planets. And that's the reason man's always wanted to go to the other planet. It's in him. It's in there. And he just kept pushing till he finally got it done. But that's the reason why. So the, here it is right here, second chapter of the book of Ephesians. Verse 11. Wherefore, remember that you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, 
Who's a Gentiles? Who's a Goyim? That's just somebody that doesn't know God. He's separated from God. Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision. See, we're, we're just talking about covenant uh, all, all the way through this. And it's blood called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. At that time, you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants, plural, strangers from the covenants of promise without hope, having no hope and without God in the world. Spencer, why is that called the Word of God? Because both words are blood sworn oaths. It's called His Word, and that's just turned into another name for Bible. It's called his word because his promise, his, his oath, it is his bond. He is like, like, like Milan the Feather says, he is absolutely honest. He cannot lie. It isn't that he won't lie. He cannot lie. It is his bond, huh? He's bound to this. He is sworn to this. Now turn with me to Matthew 22, Matthew 22, 41. <clears throat> there is a word a covenant, especially, it is especially tied to the blood relationship. It's one of the most difficult words to bring into the English language. And if you don't know what it is, you don't see it in the in the first covenant, it's, and it is so poorly translated. The English language is, is like that. It has way too many words in it. And you just mess around with all kinds of different words and just, you know. And the translators of the English Bible know less about it than anybody. And some of it is so simple, like Charles Cap says, you have to have help to misunderstand some of this. <laughs> and we've had some pretty high priced religious help in times past. Like, do you suppose it's God's will to heal today? Well, if it isn't, he'd have to change his name. <laughs> Yahovah, Rafa. He's not about to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That word properly pronounced is chesed. Oh, and when you see it and you understand, and, and it's one of those words that it's like trying to say, well, what would Jesus do? Well, most people don't know what Jesus would do. But for old Americans like me, and you say, what would John Wayne? Oh, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> You'd keep your word if, they, if you died for it. Mm -hmm. And then I, then I have concept, and that's the way this word is. It is absolutely fabulous. 
Oh, I, 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 just, I just began talking about it and I, <clears throat> I can just hardly stand myself sometimes <laughs> because I, I have this awareness of my, my background being uh, Native American. My, my grandfather's blood Cherokee and, and I just, uh, some way I just, I just wanted to be an Indian. <laughs> <You know? laughs> anyway, my whole point is this. This idea of a blood brother, boy, I, oh man, okay, come on now. I, that just, uh, to be in a blood covenant and I, I, and I thought about it and in times past had looked into those covenants and, and, and then nobody ever broke them. White men broke them. I, I'll tell you, the, the red man that entered into an agreement would rather die than to break his word because of his covenant background, because of blood. That's the way they made agreements between tribes was in blood and you didn't break it. If you did break it, your own family would kill you to keep the curse from coming on you. African curses and blessings were like that. The first covenant of blood ever made on this planet. The first covenant of blood in the covenant of a man, not animals. The first was in animals. The 15th chapter of Genesis, it had all had to do with, 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 the, with animal covenant. And Abram walked, God walked in covenant. I am totally convinced that he saw God's footprints in that blood. Yes. And entered into a covenant of circumcision. Now, are you listening to me now? Yes. One of the biggest things about that blood covenant and every blood covenant was the name change. It's still practiced today. Kathy, what was your name before you entered covenant with Lynn Mink? It was Kathy Gravitt. All right. When you entered into covenant, you took his name. That's right. This is where that came from. If you entered into covenant, entered into a, a covenant of blood with a powerful family, then you took that family's name or the, the name was hyphened. And you see a family today that's, well, Rodney Howard Brown. Long, 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 long time friend of mine. I talked to Rodney about this and, and he said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, it just goes so far back, but it's still hyphened, which indicating, and, and of course, Rodney's from South Africa, which is connected to Great Britain. And it goes back so far that two families got together, the Howard family and the Brown family. And it became, he became Rodney Howard hyphen Brown. That signifies covenant. Anyway, let's get to Hesed. Matthew twenty two forty one. 41, are you there? <clears throat> While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them saying, what think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? They say unto him, the son of David. That's huge. Now, <clears throat> What is Hesed? 23rd Psalm. (coughs) 
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and Hesed shall follow me all the days of my life. Here is translated mercy. Surely goodness and Hesed follow me all the days of my life. God changed Abram's name and named him. Abraham, that H, Hashem. My God, my God. And he gave him his name. Well, what happened then in Philippians, the second chapter? And he exalted him. And the, the, the King James in English says, a name. I'll get off of it. <laughs> he gave him his name. Yes, he did. And the third chapter of the book of Hebrews, I bow my knee before the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Come on. I said, name. We're branded. So Second Chronicles chapter 20. <clears throat> it came to pass after this also, the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and, and, and so forth came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that t- and told Jehoshaphat saying, there comes a great multitude against you from beyond the sea on this side of Syria. And behold, and, and oh man, and they, all this, this news. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord, proclaimed a fast throughout Judea. Well, and, and you know the story. Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, you the God in heaven, then rule not thou over the kingdoms of the the heathen, and thine hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand you. Hey, what's he doing? He's calling on his covenant God. Well, how does he do it? He just goes to the Word and just starts talking to him about it. Isaiah, God said, my word will not return unto me void. Well, how does it return to him? In prayer, in in, in seeking him and reminding him of his covenant promises. Reminding him who he is and who you are. He said, I, even I, am he that brought out your transgression for my own sake. I said, I, I don't get that, Lord. For his sake. Why? We are his covenant people. And only thing he has on his mind is for you to be whole. Spirit, soul, body, financially, socially, the nation, everything about you, everything, all of it, all of it. Well, Brother Copeland, I think money, I don't care what you think about money, you need it. And a lot of it. And they'll pay you more than you're worth. Ask me how I know. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I learned a long time ago, particularly the idea that comes out of his covenant people in that desert. I mean, listen, he's covenanted to these people and he, he's, he, he, he's so bound to them, but the, 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 the laws of the spirit cannot be ignored. 
and they kept saying it every way you could think of, we're going to die in this desert. He brought us out here to kill us. It'd be better if he killed us. And blah, blah, blah. Just, we're going to die in the desert. We're going to die in the desert. We're going to die in the desert. <laughs> and they get what they said. He said, I've had enough of that. You're going to die in the desert. <laughs> and now a horrible thing took place that is still cursing Christians today. Three score and 10, four score if by strength. That is never, God didn't even say that. He was forced into saying that because nobody over 20 years old is getting out of this desert alive. It was a curse. The only time span that God said right at the beginning of the Bible, and this is a covenant statement, the days of man will be 120 years. 99 and 9 tenths percent of the Christians don't even know it's in the Bible. And if it is, well, yeah, yeah, like we could do that. <laughs> Praise God. Most of you know, the, I mean, the Lord asked me if I would do that. And I said, well, absolutely I'll do that. Dear Lord. Well, I had to go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to get a message like that when you're overweight. <laughs> Boy, it's bad, man. I mean, it's hit that exercise room and hit it hard. And now I'm, I'm enjoying, I never, I, I never dreamed I would enjoy a treadmill like I do now. Well, you ought to rest in the mind. I fully intended to. I fully intended to. And, but I wake up at the same time and I thought, I mean, that's during the meeting. I've got my treadmill there in the, in the room. And, and I thought, uh, you know, I, well, I, I could just, oh, get up, Copeland. <laughs> but I just, I, I can't do without it. And it's just right up in front of my eyes all the time because my Jesus, my blood brother, I found out he's my blood brother, my blood brother, my blood brother. I, and, and my my blood brother asked me to do that. And, and so I said, yes, sir. I, he asked me to do it, but to me, it's a mandate. So I had to, and, and he, here's what got me. Mm. When you begin to think covenant all the time, I just can't get enough of that. I, I just want more. I want more and more of it. I, I am I'm seriously addicted to the Spirit of God. And so, I, I, but, I, but I'm that way about being in covenant with Him all the time. Danke, dass Sie heute Victory Worte des Glaubens gesehen haben. Die deutsche Ausgabe des monatlich erscheinenden Magazins Believers Voice of Victory wird Ihren Glauben stärken und kann auch auf unserer Webseite gelesen oder heruntergeladen werden. Sie können auch den monatlichen Partnerbrief und die täglichen Andachten aus Glauben zum Glauben per E-Mail erhalten. Sie können im Sieg leben und das Leben von Menschen verändern. Vergessen Sie bis zum nächsten Mal nicht, Gott liebt Sie und Jesus ist Herr.